Hello everyone, welcome back again. And Chelsea both recorded emphatic wins to Leapfrog United, meaning Ten Hag's side currently sit in 8th position. Never in the Premier League era have United finished lower than 7th, and so a win tonight could be key as they aim to secure a place in the Europa League next season. Ten Hag confirmed on Thursday that Bruno Fernandes is a doubt for the game and that a late decision would be made on Scott McTominay. The news that Johnny Evans is set to return this evening became even more of a boost on Sunday night when it was revealed Harry Maguire had picked up a knock and will be out for three weeks. Marcus Rashford is also not unavailable for the trip to the capital. United conceded nine seconds after a Galatasaray throw in their own half at Old Trafford earlier this season, and that goal from Olise also came nine seconds after a Palace throw in their own half. Tell a Sunday League coach your team would concede a goal like that, and they would be furious. It's embarrassing. Casemiro gets dragged out of position and sells himself badly. Then Evans backtracks far too much. It's a gift for Olise and a goal that is as soft as it gets. That was risable. Ten Hag was livid with someone, possibly Hodgland, and vented at them after Olise scored. That throw-in was in Palace's half and they scored within 10 seconds, maybe. It was united this season in a microcosm. No midfield, an exposed defense, and a big gap between the forwards and defenders. Palace take the lead just after the 10-minute mark through Michael Olis. That was far too easy. He drove toward the edge of the box without being challenged and found the back of the net with a superb finish. Ten Hag is raging. The away end here consists of two and a half blocks, but every United fan in there is stood and it makes for a condensed atmosphere. The United supporters have been in fine voice since kickoff. They have aired their pay-in to Cantona and are looking ahead to Wembley. Johnny Evans is the only starter who has been serenaded. Azzy just demonstrated how quick his feet can be with the ball. Fortunately, Casemiro snuffed out the danger, but the Palace forward will fancy his chances of scoring or assisting tonight. He's a brilliant player and United will have to follow him closely. Instant boos from loads of Palace fans as United fans sing Cantona's name 29 years on from the Kung Fu kick here. One of United's biggest issues this season has been a deep defense and a high line, and as much Ten Hag has tried to dispute that analysis, it has left glaring holes in midfield. You can see it being a major problem tonight. The front three want to play high, the midfielders all like to get forward, and the central defenders lack a yard of pace, so will natural defend deep. I can see Casemiro and Evans having to make a lot of blocks. The first thing United fans sang about after the teams emerged was the FA Cup final. Plenty won't care which Europa competition United are in, but many will still want midweek trips to places they would struggle to find on a globe. It is vital that United are in European competition next season. We're underway at Selhurst Park. Follow our live blog for updates throughout the game. Looking at Ten Hag's bench tonight, there are only two players he would proactively use out of nine. The five Outfield Academy graduates are making up the numbers for some invaluable work experience, while the other two are goalkeepers. It is an invidious position for the manager to be in, but United ought to have signed more robust players, tweaked training sessions, hired a new fitness coach, and gutted the medical department. Apart from that, it's rotten luck. We're almost set for kickoff in the capital. One is looking forward to seeing Adam Wharton in the flesh tonight. He's been excellent for Palace since he joined from Blackburn for 20 minimalers in January, and his value will be more than double that now. He has got a good chance of playing for England before the end of the year if he continues the way he is playing. Juan Bissaka was applauded by Palace fans and applauded them back. He may have a route back there in the summer. United are warming up in front of their away fans. A few were milling outside the Prince George pub when we drove past earlier, almost all of them dressed in black. Very on brand. Jean-Claude Blanc is acting as United's interim CEO until 13 July. He's at the game tonight. Nicholas Jackson has scored more goals than Rasmus Hoyland this season. Jackson is 22 and Hodgland is 21, so it is an entirely fair comparison. 
They are both in pressure cooker environments, and there is mitigation for their seasonal form, but however you dress it up, it is not a good look for Hodgland, who's performed poorly since he returned from injury. Transfer season is nearly upon us once again, with the summer set to filled with comings and goings. While many players and fans will be focused on the upcoming Euro 2024 tournament, Premier League clubs will instead be looking at boosting their squads for next season. Manchester United are one of the sides expected to be highly active, having endured a dreadful second season under Eric Ten Hag. The Red Devils now have a new recruitment team in place, in the hope of turning around their fortunes. Liverpool may also be busy, as they prepare for life after Jurgen Klopp. With another overhaul potentially on the cards once Arna Slot replaces the German as many expect. Arsenal's summer will likely be consumed by their search for a new striker, with Mikel Arteta's side set to agonizingly miss out on the title. United Inside Football will be bringing you all the twists and turns of what is expected to be a busy summer. These are the transfer strategies proposal that happen. Let's start on. Sancho offered Man Uti lifeline Eric Ten. Hag has revealed that representatives from Manchester United have visited exiled star Jaden Sancho at Borussia Dortmund. Sancho, 24, was loaned back to former club Dortmund in the January transfer window, having gone four months without a game for United. But the 23-capped England international has rediscovered his form in Germany, helping Dortmund reach the semi-finals of the Champions League. Sancho was instrumental during Wednesday's 1-0 win at home to Paris Saint-Germain in the first leg, putting in the kind of electric performance not seen throughout his two-and-a-half seasons at Old Trafford. But it appears that his United career isn't over yet, despite being banned from the first-team dressing room and canteen until his loan move to Dortmund. We are visiting games, Ten Hag explained. We visited, I would not say all of the games, but we have seen more games from Dortmund where Jaden was performing. We also had a visit with him. We had a talk with him during his stay there, and we will keep going with this process. We will continually be in contact and communicate. We have four important games in the league and then the FA Cup final, so we will see in the summer what's going to happen. Manchester United defender Harry Maguire has sustained a muscle injury in training that will keep him out for around three weeks. Maguire has played through knocks against Bournemouth and Coventry in the last month, but won't be available against Crystal Palace on Monday night. The centre-back has sustained a fresh muscle injury in training, and he's set to be unavailable for about three weeks. Maguire should be fine to represent England at this summer